Two Sarawakian children die from rabies. Malaysia declared free of bird flu virus. Hello and good evening. I'm Mohana Priya. Welcome to News on 2. Two siblings infected with the rabies virus have died at the Sarawak General Hospital this afternoon. State local government and housing minister Dato Dr. Sim Kui Hian said the older sibling, a girl aged six, died at 1.43 p.m. while her younger brother died three minutes later. A third child is still ventilated and categorized as critically ill. Meanwhile, the Sarawak state government has declared five villages in the Syrian district as areas with rabies infections. I have issued an order, the anti-rabies vaccination order, so that all household dogs in the infected area and in the civilian areas, which is 10 kilometer radius from ground zero, must be vaccinated with anti-rabies Vaccine. Dato Amar Douglas Uga, who is also the Disaster Management Committee chairman, said the committee set the limit to 10 kilometer radius as dogs infected with the rabies virus were likely to move about before they eventually die of the disease. He said the Disaster Management Committee is sending out vaccination teams to the affected villages today to carry out the vaccination initially inside the infected zones before going to areas within the surveillance zones. He urged for full cooperation of all household dog owners to have their dogs vaccinated as soon as possible to contain and eradicate the outbreak in the shortest time possible. Meanwhile, Malaysia has been officially declared free of the bird flu disease, also known as highly pathogenic avian influenza H5N1 since July 1st. It was announced by Director of Veterinary Services, Dato Dr. Kwaza Nizamuddin Hassan Nizam, in a statement today. According to him, there have been no new H5N1 cases tracked for 90 days since the last disinfection on April 1st. The conditions set by the World Animal Health Organization, OIE, in those 90 days played a role in addressing the related animal diseases. With Malaysia's status as a country free of bird flu, it is expected that import countries such as Japan, Indonesia, Sri Lanka and China will withdraw the temporary export restrictions and allow the re-entry of chicken, duck and bird's nest from Malaysia. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi announced today that communities living along the Sungai Golo Reserve land in Kelantan will be relocated to curb the increasingly alarming methamphetamine trafficking activities in the area. Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid, who is also Home Minister, said the syndicates use various organized strategies to move the drugs, including jungle trails, aside from the Sungai Golo waterway. Uh, terdapat uh, jeti-jeti persendirian yang uh, telah didirikan di Sungai Golok uh, di tiap-tiap rumah yang berkenaan dan ini menyebabkan berlakunya penyeludupan yang uh, tidak diketahui. Uh, Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid added that as long-term solution, a permanent wall will be built to step up efforts in combating drug smuggling, along with increased enforcement along the Sungai Golo waterways. He said this to reporters at the Kuching International Airport today at the end of his working visit to Sarawak. The Natural Resources and Environment Ministry will form a special committee on sanitary landfill in the government's efforts to identify causes and find solutions to pollution issues, especially the contamination of water resources in the country. Its Deputy Minister, Dato Dr. Hamim Samuri, said this will also address the frequent cases of water pollution lately, which, among others, were caused by sanitary landfills. Dato Dr. Hamim said the decision to form the special committee was made following a meeting with the Urban Wellbeing, Housing and Local Government Ministries Secretary General, which was attended by the Department of Environment and related agencies. He added that the ministry is currently in the process of preparing a new bill relating to national water resources and is expected to be tabled in Parliament by the end of September. Kami masih di peringkat akhir untuk mendapatkan persetujuan, persetujuan daripada semua pihak terutamanya semua kerajaan-kerajaan negeri tentang uh, pengurusan sumber air 
Saya nak sebut di sini It's not pengurusan bekalan air sahaja eh. Pengurusan sumber air Secara holistik Yang melibatkan sungai Yang melibatkan lembangan Yang melibatkan intik poin dan sebagainya ha, Termasuk tasik Termasuk air, air yang dilepaskan ke sungai Sorry. Air licik yang, yang, yang dilepaskan di sungai Itu termasuk He said this after visiting the landfill site at CEP Estate, Simpang Rengam, Johor today. The landfill site, which has exceeded its capacity, had resulted in the occurrence of ammonia pollution in Sungai Benut. To overcome the excess capacity at the landfill, Datu Dr. Mhamim said some of the garbage would be moved to the nearest sanitary landfills and periodic monitoring will be carried out on Sungai Benut. The newly launched Special Criminal Court on Sexual Crimes Against Children heard its first case today in front of Sessions Court Judge Yong Zarida Sazali, who has 25 years' experience in the legal profession. The accused, Chua Kim Yap, who is unemployed, is charged with the offence at a hotel in Jalan Tuanku Abdul Rahman, Kuala Lumpur, on June 27th. No plea was made by the accused. Bail was denied by Judge Yong Zarida and fixed August 8th for re-mention. The accused faced a two-year prison term upon conviction under Section 377D of the Penal Code for assault or use of criminal force with intent to outrage a person's modesty. Another case under Section 3761 of the Penal Code for underage rape was also heard today and recorded via video camera throughout the trial. Trial is set for August 7th to 9th. Meanwhile, three other cases pending re-mention under the same section of the Penal Code at the Kuala Lumpur and Selangor Sessions Courts have been transferred to Putrajaya. A lorry driver was charged today in the Aikaro Sessions Court on two counts of kidnapping two brothers from their home in Jasin in 2010. The accused, K. Bala Subramaniam, 42, however, pleaded not guilty when the charges were read to him by an interpreter in front of Judge Mior Sulaiman Ahmad Tarmizi. The accused was first charged under Section 361 of the Penal Code for kidnapping a minor who was then 12 from the latter's legal guardian's house in Taman Sri Hilir on Lok Batang Laka Jasin on September 2, 2010. He was accused of committing the offence between 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. He was also charged under Section 362 of the same act for deceiving a teenager who was then 15 to leave the same legal guardian's house to a palm oil plantation at the same time and day. Both charges carry a maximum in imprisonment penalty of seven years and fine, respectively. Deputy Public Prosecutor Siti Ruvina Mohamad Rawi applied for the court to deny bail to the accused to prevent him from possibly disturbing the prosecuting witness. Judge Mior Sulaiman, in giving his judgment, denied bail to the accused and set August 2nd for remention. Now, the remand order for 50 people who were arrested recently for involvement in a Macau scam syndicate, which ended today, has been extended until Thursday for further investigation. The order was issued by Magistrate Nur Azwin Wati in the Balik Pulau Magistrates Court, Pulau Pinang, at around 8.45 a.m. Those detained consist of 47 men and 3 women aged between 17 and 42. Police are investigating the case under Section 420 of the Penal Code for cheating. On Saturday, a team from Pulau Pinang CCID arrested the 50 suspects in a raid at a bungalow house in Taman Damai Utama, Puchong, Slango, following a police report launched by a woman victim in Balai Pulau, Pulau Pinang. The syndicate's modus operandi was to dupe their victims by pretending to be bank officers and police officers who want to conduct investigations into irregularities in the victim's account. The scammers would ask the victims to transfer money to a specific account to avoid their accounts from being frozen. The syndicate was believed to have managed to scam 82 victims involving 2.75 million ringgit. An assistant a mechanical engineer from Maktab Technik PDRM Bakri in Mua, Johor has been detained for alleged graft amounting to 700,000 ringgit. The 42-year-old suspect is believed to have requested and accepted bribes from a contractor as an inducement to secure supply and service attenders at the institution from 2014 to 2016. The suspect was detained at his home in Merlimau, Melaka to facilitate investigations by the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC. During a raid on the suspect's home, the MACC team recovered 32,000 ringgit in cash hidden in a biscuit container. MACC officers also seized valuables and a Toyota Prado. The case is being investigated under Section 16, Subsection AB of the MACC Act, punishable with five times the amount of bribe 
or 10,000 ringgit, whichever is higher, and a maximum prison term of 20 years upon conviction. Due to a refusal to move out of his home, a Myanmar worker was stabbed to death with a knife in the neck by a compatriot after a quarrel. The incident occurred around 10.55 p.m. yesterday at an unnumbered house they shared in a vegetable farm in Sungai Durian, Mukim Kurung Anai, Arau, Perlis. In a statement made by Arau District Police Chief Superintendent Nanda Maruf when visiting the scene, the victim, Mien Niang, 37, was said to have refused to move to another house as instructed by employers. In the quarrel, the suspect, Pio Zhao, age 23, stabbed the victim's neck and ran amok, causing his other friends to flee the scene. Dan kesemua saksi-saksi yang bersama dengan yang lain-lain itu kita dah buat tangkapan dan kita sedang dalam proses pembahariman. Manakala suspek masih kita sekarang kita masih dalam op uh, tutup untuk mengesan suspek. The suspect is believed to be still in the area. The body was taken to the hospital Sultana Alusta for a postmortem. The case is being investigated under Section 302 of the Penal Code for murder. More than 3,000 illegal foreign workers in Malacca have failed to apply for the enforcement card or e-card after the grace period ended last Saturday. According to Malacca Immigration Deputy Director Abu Bakar Sidik Hassan, the number was based on the total of 8,000 e-cards that were targeted to be issued. Untuk majikan, kita ingatkan kepada majikan supaya kalau tidak faham mengenai pekerja asing ini boleh terus berjumpa dengan Jabat Immigration Negeri Melaka lah kalau dalam Negeri Melaka ni. Bertanya dengan pegawai immigration apa prosedur persuai yang perlu dilakukan oleh mereka untuk mendapatkan pekerja asing. Jangan terus menjumpa ejen. The Malacca Immigration has detected eight fake e-cards that were obtained from agents who claimed to receive them from non-governmental agencies. The fake e-cards were detected during an operation at a tailor's shop and an ice factory in Alugaja and Malacca Tengah. The 38-year-old employer was detained to assist in investigations. The employer alleged that an agent had deceived him into believing that the card was recognized as the same as the foreign worker's e-card. Five food stalls were burnt down in an early morning blaze at the Jurantut Market in Pahang today. State Fire and Rescue Depart Deputy Operations Commander for East Zone, Mohamed Arshad Abdullah, when contacted, confirmed there was no loss of lives in the incident. According to Mohamed Arshad, a fire and rescue team was dispatched to the scene at about 5.20 a.m. Fire was eventually brought under control about 20 minutes later. It was eventually put out at 7.05 a.m. The cause of the fire and losses incurred were still under investigation.